Hey Yetta, do you need a big stick when you're gonna use it for leverage? Moving forward with the Decker team. Moving forward together with the Decker team. I don't know. I have no idea where he's going on this one. The good news is I do know where we're going as far as the real estate show goes. So we have um, had the privilege and the honor of enjoying over 30 years of coming alongside people, not only in selling and buying real estate, also in helping people build their finances, helping people build their fun, helping people build their faith, and even deepen flourish, and heal in their relationships. 30 years of helping people in their life, their business, and their home. Well, that's actually great that you said you know what's happening in real estate. Because in real estate, you don't need a big stick to make leverage. Mm -hmm. You just need a mortgage. Exactly. And in this episode, you're going to learn how does the mortgage, a mortgage, give me leverage? Because yeah. normally mortgage is a bad thing. Like I think of a mortgage, I don't want a mortgage on my house. I want to own my house outright. And there's a sense and feeling, I think, for a lot of us that mortgages feel confining. It feels like somebody else owns my house and not me. Well, that's one opinion. That is an opinion. Yeah. And it's a feeling that I think people say that to me all the time. Yes. And... It may not be the best thing because if you're, let's say you pay off your house and then you re-leverage it to buy other properties, right? Right. Now we're leveraging our asset. In other words, wake up your lazy asset mm -hmm. of your house. If you own it all, why not get it, put it to work? Give it a job. Give it a job. And when you're sleeping, you make what I might call back of the head money. It's on the pillow money, like the <laughs> pillow, your head's on the pillow, you're sound asleep, you're feeling great, and you're still making money because you've leveraged. Now, we're not talking about, there is a caveat here. We are mm. not talking about over leveraging. And the great news is the Canadian system in mortgaging, unless you're doing high risk second and third mortgage type kind yeah, of high stuff, interest rates. high interest rate and things that were not necessarily, there's mm -hmm. the odd time we might recommend it. However, it'd be very rare. If you're working within the Canadian system and you have a job and you have income, so you're solvent, you really can't go wrong. The system's not going to allow for you to mess up. Well, let's look at that, Yetta. Okay. Because leveraging can be dangerous. It can be. And you that's know, the risk for people. They've heard stories. Yeah, I heard Warren Buffett actually say that leverage in the hands of the ignorant, he used a different word. I'm going to say ignorant. Of the one that doesn't know. The yeah, one that doesn't ignorant. understand. That's the meaning of ignorant. I understand, but I'm <laughs> clarifying because I don't like it when you tell me I'm ignorant. He, he says it can produce some stunning results. <laughs> 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 and I think what he's saying is, and friends of mine have done this, and I've actually done this to be truthful, leveraged in the stock market mm. and lost my money. Lost because, like a lot of it. Because mm -hmm. if you're leveraged, let's say you put 20% in and 80% is borrowed money. As soon as the stocks go down 20%, they want you to sell stocks to keep your leverage proper so that they are protected. Right. For their 80% is protected. And sometimes you got to put more money in so that they won't force you to sell them all because you could sell them all and lose all your money very quickly. And real estate can have the same issue. If it goes down, mm -hmm. because you're leveraged, you can lose your equity and the mortgage company keeps their equity in the, in the house, right? Right. But it's rare. It's rare in real estate. And let's look at 2008. Okay, let's look at 2008. That was a uh, fancy year for yeah. us. In Ottawa, anyways, we had a hiccup for about one month in October. But in the United States, some prices went down 50%. But they had also been going up 20 25% a year because they were doing terrible well, lending practices. Lending practices that were not sustainable. Yeah. Lending practices that were going to get in your way. And the great news for us as Canadians... 
they learned from what our American counterparts were doing and didn't allow that to happen they, to they, us. They actually kept making the lending stricter and stricter and stricter. And it has continued. Yes. But what's interesting is people that invested in property, mm -hmm. their equity got eaten up because the mm -hmm. value went down, but they mm -hmm. still had a tenant in there. And the bank didn't call the mortgage because why would they call mm -hmm. the mortgage if they're getting their payments? They mm -hmm. had a lot of houses where people couldn't pay the mortgage. They had to take those ones. They don't want to take one where people's making the payments, right? And guess what? Do you think the rental prices went up or down in that horrible time? The rental prices went way up. Yeah, because so all the you, people that lost their houses had to rent. So if you owned property, even in a depressed market, often, especially in this scenario, the rental prices just kept going up and up and up and up because the demand was so high. So in fact, it... You just had to wait for it to rebound. Mm -hmm. So they continued to pay off your mortgage. So yes, your equity position on paper looked dismal for a little while, and yet it rebounded, and then but, they but were thriving yeah, again. Yeah, it doesn't look now. Prices are way over 2008 prices at mm -hmm. the high end of the market. In pretty much every market. Yeah. So here's what's interesting. Let's say you buy a $500,000 house. Mm -hmm. You put 20% down. You're actually leveraged five times. So whatever income you make on that house, you gotta you get to multiply by five because you didn't invest in the hundred percent of the value. You only invested in twenty percent. So that's a hundred thousand. So let's say in the last year prices went up twenty percent on a five hundred thousand dollar house. That's a hundred thousand dollars on your hundred thousand investment. Mm -hmm. means you made a hundred percent like you but, doubled your money but let's look at five-year rate crazy five-year rate crazy was, awesome crazy awesome five-year rate was 7.8 percent and many of our clients did that they bought townhouses at 300 400 mm -hmm. and they made a hundred thousand dollars on it it's fabulous it's, it's fantastic yeah so 7.8 percent is the average over the last five years so on that 500,000 house that's about thirty nine thousand dollars but you didn't invest 500,000, you only invested 100,000. So if I make 39,000 on 100,000, that's 39% rate of return. I know, try and go to the bank and get that. Well, it, I, actually I put some money in the bank the other day because oh we have no. some, no, we have some surplus money oh that, no. that you know it hasn't found a home yet. And, and I said, well, we better move all this money into this savings account because at least we're earning interest in the the bank lady said, yeah, you're going to get 0.1 of a percent <laughs> in interest. I go, ooh, is it even worth moving it? Probably not. Just leave it alone. Mm. So the incredible thing with real estate is you get to leverage the bank's money or private money. And private money is a little more expensive. So leveraging other people's money is brilliant. And equally as brilliant, one of my favorite types of leverage is leveraging other people's knowledge. You don't have to learn all of this stuff. You could just give us a call and we could walk you through it. Read the wealth formula as a beginner primer. Read, and there's a list in the back of that book, other 10 great financial books to read. You don't have to read them all. And yet reading them will help you leverage other people's knowledge. Then you can take that knowledge, combine it with ours, your excitement for the whole idea of leveraging money and make a lot of money and eliminating all the heartache around it. Mm -hmm. And we're honored to be your advocates in real estate and life exponential. Moving forward with the Decker team. Moving forward.